Today, we're gonna to be making the ultimate Helldivers 2 list out of every single weapon, and of course, every single stratagem that you can unlock in the game. First is gonna be the overall weapons tier list, and you'll notice that it's S through D, with nothing being in the F category, because well, it's still a weapon, and you can still always get a kill with it. But when we look at the stratagems tier list, it's gonna go S all the way through F, with a meme category, and I'll explain that one when we get there. Starting off with the Liberator, this is literally the first gun you get. It doesn't do much for armor penetration, but overall it's a decent weapon to use pretty much for fighting bugs and automatons. However, when Bile Titans start coming out, but when Bile Titans start coming out, hulks and tanks, there's not much this weapon can do. Yes, it can still do damage if you're shooting their weak point, but you're gonna expend all your ammo. Overall, it's not a bad weapon all around and I like using it. I'm throwing this one right in the B category. Up next, we have the Breaker Shotgun. Now, currently, this is pretty much the meta weapon to use. You can pretty much fight almost anything with it. And it has a high rate of fire. You can switch it to single fire mode or you can keep it in full auto. It has a really tight spread and you could shoot this thing almost across the map and beam some headshots. This is the go-to weapon. So of course, this one has to fit safely in the S tier. Up next, we have the Breaker Spray and Pray. This this one does take a decent amount of metals to unlock. And once you've been using the breaker for a while, you're excited to really unlock another one with a super high fire rate. But unfortunately, this thing is not as advertised. Yes, you can spray and pray and shoot a lot of things at once. However, the damage and fall off is so weak on this thing. You can pretty much use it against bugs, but fighting almost any type of automaton, this thing will get you killed. And even if you are fighting bugs, you pretty much just wish you had the other breaker shotgun. Unfortunately, this one takes a long time to unlock and it's not worth it straight into the d tier for don't use it up next we have the breaker incendiary now this is an interesting one because it does pack some literal firepower and it's really good against fighting bugs however when you bring this bad boy to start fighting the automatons that's when you're going to find yourself in trouble of course it's nowhere close to using the regular breaker shotgun even when you're fighting the bugs it can technically do much more damage against the terminus with its direct impact and damage over time with incendiary but because it is pretty effective and you can still technically kill automatons with it i am going to throw this one in the c tier up next we have the dominator now the dominator is in an interesting spot this thing is decent at fighting the automatons especially if you're aiming at their critical points from a distance but if you start to get swarmed this gun just isn't it you're going to be begging that you still had your breaker shotgun still on i brought this one also to fight the bugs and although yes it does have medium armor penetration its slow rate of fire means you are going to get swarmed and once you are swarmed well pretty much that's the end of you and you're going to be wishing you had a different weapon however in the right hands this weapon can be a beast at fighting the automatons this one sits comfortably in the c category up next, we have the Lay's Scythe. Now, coming from Helldivers 1, using the Scythe in the first one, it was awesome. Not only did it slow down the enemies, but it destroyed them. This is one of these guns that also doesn't require ammo while you're using it, so smart players will never have to reload and use their supplies. However, this gun is almost effectively useless against the bugs. It is pretty good, however, at slaughtering automatons, especially if you're aiming right for their critical points. However, I did find this weapon to be hit or miss while using it. Even when I was was aiming at automatons critical points those automatons with the chainsaws who i call meat men will still run you down with ease this gun needs a buff especially when fighting the automatons i'm tempted right now to slap it right in d but it can be made effective in the right hands in the c category so it could be low c high d right now i'll be generous and throw it in c up next, we have the Scorcher. Of course, this is the final weapon you unlock, so it takes the longest and the most amount of metals to unlock it. So you would assume that this is the best gun in the game, right? Well, I mean, it almost is. It's, it's good. It does consume ammo, even though it is an energy-based weapon. In fact, I think it's one of the only energy-based weapons in this game right now that does use, well, a magazine and or clip. But this thing packs a punch. Of course, fighting automatons, this thing will completely destroy them. Fighting automatons, this is a very serviceable rifle. It's actually good and great in the right hands. And even fighting bugs, it can do a lot of damage because it blows up on impact. Pretty much this is an energy-based DMR or marksman rifle. I do love using this gun. It's decent. It's an all-arounder. You can fight medium range and long range with this one. However, up close, it does suffer because you can actually do some damage to yourself and allies because of the impact damage. Because of that, it should be put in the B tier. However, played in the right hands, it could be put as an A weapon. So this is either high B or low A, but I'm going to be generous and throw that actually in the A category. 
Up next is the first sidearm you use in the game, and that is the Peacemaker. This is pretty much your screwed switch to your sidearm and get those final shots out before you meet a bitter end as a Helldiver. It can do some damage if you shoot things in its critical spot, especially if you're fighting automatons, but pretty much anything with armor, this thing will bounce off of. The fire rate is pretty much as fast as you can squeeze the trigger, but you don't really get a lot of ammo and you're not gonna be using this, of course, as a primary, especially considering it is a sidearm, but there are better sidearms to use. You're definitely not gonna be using this when you unlock something else. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna throw this one right in the D tier. Moving on, we have the Redeemer. This is a sidearm SMG that you can unlock. I had high hopes for this one, and when I first used it, I actually wasn't impressed with it. Its high rate of fire makes it really hard to use, especially at a distance. But this is not a distance weapon, nor is it even a mid-range weapon. This guy is up close and personal. And once you realize that, this can be an absolute beast, both fighting automatons and the bugs. It does have some light armor penetration, and once you are swarmed by things with that one, it really packs a punch and is great for crowd control. If you're using this one wrong, it's pretty much gonna flop in a B, maybe even C category, but once you understand how to use it and you're using it effectively, it is a high B or even a low A. So let's be generous and put that bad boy in the A category. Moving on, we have the Senator. This is a high-powered sidearm that is a revolver with up to six shots. So depending on how you feel about this gun, it's gonna make you want to use it. Once most people unlock and use the Redeemer, they may not use the Senator because they're so satisfied with its up-close SMG. However, the Senator in the right hands and used while crouching can be an absolute beast. Even battling things like Dominators and other shielded enemies, the Senator can actually take them out in almost one shot. It has a good aim down sights, and even its third person aiming is really great, especially when you're crouched. But if you're getting swarmed and you're flinching, well, you will miss every single shot. The revolver itself definitely has a high skill ceiling to make it very effective, but it's still a great sidearm for fighting both Terminid as well as Automaton. But because of its skill ceiling, I'm gonna probably put this one in the B. Up next, we have the Liberator Penetrator. A version of the original Liberator that you first get, the Penetrator actually boosts itself because it has medium armor penetration. It has both single fire and burst fire. And just like its cousin, it's a very serviceable rifle, both fighting bugs as well as the automatons. At range, I recommend throwing this one into semi-fire, and you could also increase its scope distance, making it also a very serviceable DMR. And switching back to burst mode is really great when you're also getting swarmed. It does have a lower fire rate and does less damage, and you get less ammo than its regular Liberator, but it tries to make up for it with medium armor penetration. However, it is not enough. And because of that, this is actually gonna throw this one in the C category for that one. Up next, we have the Liberator Explosive, and this rifle might actually be pretty divisive. I know some people feel it's good, other people feel it's terrible. Now, because it does explosive damage, you would think that this one is much, much better than its standard Liberator, especially considering it has the same damage type as the Liberator. And with explosive, this thing should be knocking things on its ass. However, it does not do that. I would say that this gun is in desperate need of a buff as well. In the right hands, you can definitely do some damage with it. It's pretty decent against fighting automatons as well. But to be honest, you can do the same damage and probably kill even more automatons if you just stuck with the regular Liberator itself. This one is hard for me because even using it up against the Terminids, I kept getting swarmed. Even though it has light armor penetration and explosive, you would think it would be killing the swarm with ease but it's not. I'm gonna throw this one in possibly lower average, which makes it a C tier. Arguably, it could be a D tier or B tier. It's up to the player, but I think it's fair just to stay safe and put it in C. Up next, we have the Diligence Marksman Rifle, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one. It's actually pretty terrible. Even for battling automatons, sometimes you have to take two to three shots to even take out the smallest of the automaton forces. And using this one on the bugs is an absolute no-go. Yes, you can sit in the back and try to take shots on things, but ironically enough, Using this marksman rifle outside of its scoped ADS mode almost make this a viable option, especially because it's doing 112 damage per shot. However, it doesn't feel like that. So use this weapon at your own risk and discretion. It is pretty terrible, so I'm throwing it right in the D category. Up next is the second marksman rifle you unlock 
which is the Diligence Counter Sniper. Although it says it doesn't do much more damage than the original Diligence, this one almost feels like it's doing double damage, even though it's doing 128 compared to 112. However, you can one-shot all the little mobs and the automatons with this. Even shooting the bigger automatons weakness like headshots and backpacks, this can take them out at range. So if you're looking to support your team with this one, you can. But when you move on and start fighting the Terminids, yes, you can definitely take out a lot of bugs from range. However, if you do get swarmed, and you will, this is not the gun you want for that. It is definitely better than the first marksman rifle you get, but it's not an amazing weapon by any sort. I'm throwing this one in the C category. Up next, we have the Knight, which is an SMG. You can use this one in one hand, so if you're partnering this one with objectives or even the ballistic shield for some reason, you can still use your primary weapon. However, this thing suffers at range and even medium combat. Fully expect to get up close and personal with this weapon. It does have light armor penetration, so if you are getting swarmed, you could shoot your way out of it because of its super fast fire rate, but this thing scorches through ammo. You'll find yourself unloading into one mob only to see a bunch of other mobs coming right at you. It's an okay weapon, but it's nowhere close to an all-arounder and you should definitely not be using this weapon as a go-to. It's average at best, and I'm throwing it in the C tier. Up next, we have the Defender, which is another SMG. And I'm hoping to shake things up actually where I'm gonna put this one in the tier list. This SMG is much more powerful than the other one. It does 70 damage compared to 50 for the Knight, and it has a very flat rate of fire. This one I found actually really, really good for fighting the Automatons and serviceable to pretty decent against fighting the Terminids. You can pretty much fight off three to five of those chainsaw handed meat men, which is similar to what the Breaker can actually do. However, on more heavily armored things, you're pretty much only aiming for weak spots to do damage because it will ping off of armor. And that's why it's not an S tier for sure. However, this gun does great at short range, medium, and long range. It is a very, very good weapon. And I really feel undervalued. So for me personally, this is a very good weapon. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this one in the A tier and you can fight me on that one. Up next, we have the Punisher shotgun. This is the first shotgun you have access to. And this is by no means good. It does horrendous at long range. There's no hope of you even making a shot. Medium range, you might hit them and do some damage, but just piss something off. And at close range, well, unfortunately, it really doesn't kill many things and one shot at close range. Even those small hunters that you fight as Terminids will take about two shots to kill. There's really nothing special about the shotgun. If you use it past like level five, then I don't know what's wrong with you. This is a terrible, terrible weapon and it belongs in the D category. The final weapon we're gonna take a look at is the Slugger, which is another shotgun to unlock. You would think that this one would also be a terrible, terrible weapon but you would be wrong. It seems like it's gonna do less damage considering this one is about 280 compared to 330 damage per shot of the other shotgun that I said was terrible. However, this slugger boasts a secret about it. When you shoot something with it, it actually hits them back. So if you're fighting armored things that are constantly chasing you, the slugger not only will do damage, but push them away from you. And did you know that this shotgun can actually save you a grenade? Those storage doors that you find, this can actually shoot and blow open those storage doors. So don't waste a grenade if you have them. This thing is also very accurate. You can actually scope down this one and shoot some things at long range. And even at close range, this is one shot in a lot of the targets. I personally think this is another sleeper. It's definitely not an S or A tier but i think it comfortably sits in the b tier so that is the tier list that i think for the current state of the weapons here let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below try to be nice about it but i'll probably fight you on some of these things but go ahead and leave a comment just make sure it's respectful now let's move on to stratagems first one up is we have the guard dog now this is one of those floating robots that actually takes your backpack slot so some people might already have a problem with that rather than fire a laser this one actually shoots a machine gun and a quite powerful machine gun might i add however the range of this one is well not that good unfortunately there's many times i found where i was screaming at this robot dog to please shoot at the enemy unfortunately this also actually uses ammo and once it's out it does return to your backpack and that's where you think it is restocking but no no it is not restocking it is completely on you to collect supplies so that it can reload and although shooting is powerful it does make this a borderline non-viable option. There are way better backpacks out there. It definitely doesn't deserve an F tier by any means because you can definitely get a decent amount of kills by it, but it is unreliable, unfortunately. So this one sits at a D. 
Up next is the Shield Generator Backpack. Now this one needs no introduction. It's a backpack you wear that generates a protective bubble around the player. It blocks incoming damage until it breaks. And even if you get spat on and hit by a crowd control effect, this one will not slow you down. This is great for keeping yourself alive and it's pretty much a must use meta pick of this one. So without surprise, this one goes in the S tier. Moving on, we have the Guard Dog Rover. This is another backpack dog that follows you, but packs a laser. And this laser has unlimited ammo. Yes, the dog will come back to recharge in the backpack, but once they are recharged, they are ready to fight again. And this thing can shoot at anything in your area. However, if you're not careful, it will laser your face off and all of your friends as well. So make sure you understand that going in. It will not be able to penetrate armor, but you can get creative and run around an armored opponent and let the dog shoot at the weak parts. A great tactic I find with this one is actually running away from a big crowd as you're getting swarmed and let your laser dog do the work for you. You can definitely stack up the kills with this one. I think it is fantastic. It is a must have. Some people would put it in the A category, some people will put it in the S category. I want to be generous and I love my dog companion, so I'm gonna put him in the S category. Up next is the Ballistic Shield Pack. Now this Ballistic Shield is extremely interesting. And by interesting, I mean horrendous. Right away, this absolutely deserves an F tier for what it is. It can, in theory, block oncoming projectiles that aren't explosive warheads or spitile. However, even small arms fire gets around this shield. You can get hit in the arm and the leg and still take oncoming damage. It also takes up a backpack slot and you can only use a primary that can be wielded in one hand or your sidearm. I wanted to use it to face tank the automatons and shoot them in the head, but I was still taking damage with it. And if you get meleeed, your character drops a thing. So of course this should be a complete F tier, but this is definitely a meme weapon. You would bring it in just for whatever fun of it and see what you can do with it. Although this should be an F, we're throwing it in the memes. Up next, we have the Supply Backpack. This is another one that uh, is possibly extremely low and not viable at all. You can run around and give your fellow Helldivers more ammunition, more grenades, and more stims to keep themselves alive. However, you cannot grab anything from this Supply Pack, even if you drop it on the ground for some reason. And your fellow Helldivers can't even run past you and grab the supplies off your backpack themselves. You have to physically walk over to them and press the Interact button just to give them the supplies. And because it takes a backpack slot makes this one, well, unfortunate. You'll be playing as the pack mule if you want to do this one. This should be an F tier, but I'm also thinking you would use this one only for the memes. Moving on, we have the jump pack. When you first unlock the jump pack, you are super excited to use it because who wouldn't want to have a jet pack and fly over their enemies and shoot down and rain hell down from heaven? However, you can't do that. You jump a mildly okay height enough to get on top of like a rock or even a container. But don't forget containers can be destroyed and this does take a decent amount to recharge. However, in theory, if you were to partner this one with a marksman rifle or an anti-material rifle, you can eventually get to a high enough point where you are viable. However, you will be completely screwing over your team and leaving them in limbo. But if you're only in it for yourself and you wanna rack up kills, then yeah, this can be useful. A special note is the jump pack can also get you out of a sticky situation. Let's say you're slowed or you're getting swarmed or the bile titan is about to throw up all over you. You can use the jump pack to quickly get out of that situation. However, that's primarily only what it's gonna be used for. I pretty much never see anyone using this one. And when I use it myself, I was very sad to find out what you can and can't do with it. So F. Up next, we have the laser cannon. This is one of my favorite weapons. This is another one that doesn't use ammo and it is really strong. However, if you're fighting something that's super armored, especially from the front, expect to do no damage. I'm talking about things like chargers and even those chicken walker things. However, surprisingly enough, this is pretty good even against the terminates as well as the automaton. And if you know what you're doing, you also can rack up a ton of kills with this one. Not only is this great for crowd control, but you can also snipe things from a distance with this one. And this has a quick reload, even if you found that you overheated the weapon for some reason. It's very fun to use, but definitely has its weaknesses. But also, it has some very good strengths. I'm throwing this one in the B tier. Moving on, we have the arc thrower. Now the arc thrower is seemingly a very powerful energy weapon. Also not relying on ammo, this thing can be charged up and kill multiple things at once, including your fellow Helldivers if they're too close to the enemy when you fire it. However, I feel that it doesn't kill enough things at once 
I find when the enemies are bunched up, maybe it gets to four if I'm truly lucky, but never have I been that truly lucky in this game. It's good against almost all types of enemies that you will encounter. You will get swarmed while using this one, especially if you're playing solo. But if you're playing with a group and you choose to use this one, you might not get swarmed but you might also slay your fellow Helldivers with it as well. It's a decent weapon, but I do think it's average, possibly even overrated. I'm throwing this one in the C tier. Up next, we have the Grenade Launcher. Now, the Grenade Launcher was something that I think was personally slept on for way too long. This is great for not only clearing objectives by blowing up terminated hives as well as automaton bases if you can really get the grenade in there, but it's also amazing at crowd control. I'm talking automatons and terminates. This thing messes them up. Although eh, it doesn't do much up against bio titans and tanks. And if you're fighting a charger, you need to shoot underneath it or at its back to really do any type of damage. However, this is a very serviceable weapon. It would be great if this had the ability to blow up on impact, but it doesn't. It's definitely not an S tier, but this one is an awesome to use weapon. Great for clearing objectives and mobs. This is an A for sure. Up next, we have the spear. Now the spear pretty much has almost one use right now, and that is to lock onto objectives from a distance. And by objectives, I mean things like fabricator bases and stationary gun turrets, as well as hulks, and tanks when you're fighting the automatons. Now this pretty much has no use up against the terminates. If you bring it to fight terminates, you lose. But if you're looking to fight the automatons, this is awesome if you wanna be the player that goes after the objectives and big boys while your fellow Helldivers thin the herd. I love using it. It gets me to blow up objectives extremely quickly. And it is technically a team-based reload. So this will also require you to not only use the weapon, but have the backpack. But you can reload it yourself, similar to the light machine gun. And you could actually use this one before an enemy even sees you. For what it is and its specialty, I'm throwing this one in the C tier. Up next, we have the railgun. The railgun is an instant S tier, especially if you're using it in unsafe mode. You can one-shot everything in this game. It is completely broken and partner that one with a bubble shield. You are mildly unstoppable. A bio titan will fear you personally as you take it down in one shot. I've played with people that have killed four bio titans in a row in less than seven seconds because of this one. Don't sleep on the railgun. Obviously it is the best in its current state. Up next we have the auto cannon. This is another team-based weapon that is technically required for fast reloads, but you can also personally reload it yourself. This is definitely a distance weapon, but this thing packs a punch. It is fun to use in both third person and first person and will blow things away. Super fun to use, and if you can convince someone to also reload for you, you can actually take down a ton of things. You can blow up a fabricator base or shoot down a dropship with it, but this thing can level a lot of opponents. Surprisingly enough, this one fits in the B tier. Up next, we have the flamethrower. The flamethrower is so fun to use, but made completely useless if you're trying to fight automatons with it. But if you're fighting terminids, this is the go-to fun weapon. Just find tons of them and just melt them. No, it's not good up against Bile Titans, and even the Chargers can be a little bit frustrating, but you can dodge them and burn their butts. Every other Terminid will cry out in fear as you use this against them and just straight up melt them. I love this one. It's really good only up against Terminids, but completely awful against the Automatons. But because of what it is and how you use it and who it's not good against, this one fits in the C tier. Moving on, we have the Recoilless Rifle. Now this is another team-based weapon required for reloading, but you can still reload this one on yourself, so don't be afraid of that one. It just takes a decent amount of time to reload it after each shot. However, this is the dropship killer. If you're playing against the automatons and you keep seeing those dropships, aim at one of its engines and you would shoot it down and maybe kill the guys that it spawned. Unfortunately, the ship doesn't always kill everyone that spawns when it crashes. It should, but it doesn't. It's pretty good up against big things, including terminids, but because its full potential is as a team-based weapon, no one's gonna reload this thing for you because it would require them to use the backpack. Maybe if they change it so that whomever is wearing the backpack can also have their friend reload it. But this thing has its serviceable point and that is to shoot down big boys as well as dropships. Because of its use and how fun it is, I'm gonna throw that one also in the C tier. Up next is the expandable anti-tank weapon. And when you're first starting out and this is what you can call in, you think this is a good weapon, you truly do. You spawn it in, it gives you two of them. You and your friend can each pick up one and shoot it at a big boy. And then really only have to wait like a minute to two minutes to call in the next one. However, other than terminated structures that this can be shot at, 
This really can take down automaton stuff, think fabricator bases. And even as you shoot it at the big boys, you want them to be killed in one shot, especially if you shoot a charger right in the butt or other big shield guys that are automatons, you quickly find that this is severely underpowered. It's really not that good. Unfortunately, I have to put this one in the D tier. Moving on, we have the Stalwart. Now the Stalwart is that machine gun that should be a primary, which is gonna make it hard to put it here in the stratagem list. It has a really high rate of fire, tons of ammo, but doesn't really pack that much of a punch. But trust me, it makes up for it. If you're someone that just wants a good machine gun and you don't want to do objectives and clear big boys, you just want to focus on the little guys, the medium ones, and just give them the beans with this machine gun, the stalwart can be your hero. I find it's best to use this one up against the terminids. While fighting the automatons, it's kind of hard because they can be a little bit more accurate than you are. Truly, truly, I do want to put this one in the B category, but because I've used this one a lot also against the automatons and not just the terminids, it does have to fit in C, a high C, almost B, but C nonetheless. Moving on is the anti-material rifle. Do not sleep on the anti-material rifle. Yes, it does have some sway. And for the most part, if you're crouched or laying down, that's the best way to use it. But don't forget that you can adjust the sights in this one. This can be shot at almost anything in the game and do damage. It's anti-material and everything in this game is made out of material. Now, if you're that player that decides to also equip the jump pack and go somewhere super high, then I guess this is the ultimate weapon for you. This is really, really good against fighting the automatons being able to kill most things in one shot. Even fighting the hulks from the front, you can shoot them in the eyeball in the front and I believe kill them in two or three shots. However, this is something that packs a punch that you can use at range. It's really good. So for that, I'm throwing it right in the B category. Moving on is the light machine gun. The light machine gun is given to all hell divers that enlist. I gotta say, it's a pretty good weapon. You can fight tons of bugs with it. You can fight the automatons with it. It's similar to the stalwart. It just has less ammo than the stalwart, but you can also change the fire rate not only on this one but also the stalwart and do a thousand rounds a minute or even 600 rounds a minute if you want to be more accurate this thing can shred terminids it can also shred automatons i gotta say it's pretty good and the reason why i'm actually going to rate it higher than the stalwart is because not only against the bugs but on the automatons i feel like the light machine gun holds its own a little bit more however it does require you to stop moving in order to reload but nonetheless i think it is a good weapon i would put it in high c if that was a possibility but i'm going to be generous and put it in b so get ready to fight me on that one also up next we have the orbital smoke strike well in theory you're supposed to be able to use it to blind the enemy so that you don't get machine gun while you're trying to run to objectives and also if you're getting swarmed and you don't want to get spotted this should be the go-to thing but i feel like it doesn't work i still get shot and swarmed all the time while using this one there are other stratagems to use don't use this one. Maybe use it if you're trying to save the scientist, but that's like the one single time you would use it. If I see you in a normal mission and you have this smoke one, you're no longer in my fire team. F. Moving on, we have the orbital gas. Now, for some reason, the orbital gas also works on the automatons as well as it works on the bugs. This is pretty much an area of denial effect, but don't expect to use it on objectives, especially not tanks, turrets, or fabricator bases because it won't do anything there. But if you do have a good literal choke point, this is great for thinning the herd. It's funny to use, especially considering you can think of it like bug spray. And the call in time is fairly quick. I want to put this one in low C, possibly high D. But to be honest, to avoid all of that one, I'm going to throw this one in the meme category because you can use it as bug spray or to choke out the automaton. Up next is the orbital precision strike. And this one is uh, an all-arounder, maybe jack-of-all-trades stratagem. Once you unlock better ones, you'll probably never go back to this one again. But it's truly the OG because all hell divers start with it, right? It's also powerful, so it is capable of killing things like a charger in one shot. Just make sure to keep the charger there or attach this beacon to its tail. It's pretty decent and can also take out the objectives. So for that, I'm throwing it in the C category. Up next, we have the 500 kilogram bomb. Now, currently, I feel like there's something wrong with this bomb because it should do much more damage than what it currently does. I've seen this thing explode next to fabricators, on top of terminate structures, and directly on big boys and really not actually kill them. I think it's currently glitched. And if it's not glitched, then I'm very sad to use it. In its current state, it is a complete letdown when you actually unlock it. So for that one, I'm going to give it an F. It technically deserves to be in the D category, 
because I have seen it kill a Bile Titan, a Charger, and sometimes work. But for the 90% times where it doesn't work and does nothing, it is a complete failure. F. Moving on, we have the Eagle 110 rocket pods. This will blow up anything closest to the call and laser. And you and I both know that so many times things move away from that call and laser, making this one almost ineffective. However, it still does kill things, so there's that. However, there's way better things to call in. This can also technically blow up objectives, so that's pretty cool. But because of what it is and how it works, it belongs in the D category. Up next, we have the Eagle Smoke Airstrike. Similar to the other smoke one, the smoke doesn't really work as intended. You can't blow up any structures. It's kind of meant for getting you out of a sticky situation, but kind of barely works. Once again, if I see you using this one and you're not trying to extract civilians, you're booted from the squad. F. Up next is the Eagle Napalm Strike. Now, this is actually surprisingly a decent one. It can also be used against automatons, which is interesting. It can also blow up structures as well. And because it has multiple uses, when you're going objective farming, this one really can come in handy. It's pretty good, and it's funny to hear things burn, especially those terminids when you hit them with it. It's pretty average. There's better things out there. I'm throwing this one in the C category. Up next, we have the Eagle Cluster Bomb. Now, this is one of my go-to ones, even on Helldive. This thing can kill a ton of enemies at once. However, it does not do anything up against super big boys, nor does it break structures. I love using this one. It's great if you're in a pinch or you need to get your friends out of a pinch. Just be careful where you throw it because it does have a decently widespread. And because it has four uses and a quick cooldown time, this is a fantastic one to use. I'm gonna throw this one actually in the B tier. Up next is the Eagle Airstrike. This one's actually pretty powerful and it has two uses. Not only can it blow up objectives, but it can also take down big things like chargers, big boys, and even tanks and those stationary guns. It also has a quick call on time, so it is definitely a go-to. And because it can do more than just the cluster bombs, I'm gonna throw this one in A tier. Up next, we have the Eagle Strafing Run. This one pretty much comes down almost immediately when you call it in. So it can get you out of a sticky situation if you have a lot of things coming at you at once, but not if you have big things coming after you at once. So don't expect to use this one up against Charger, nor does it break any type of structure. It gets you out of a bind and can come down really quickly. It's pretty average, so I'm gonna throw it in C. Moving on, we have the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike. It does take a long time to unlock this one, but it is worth it. This thing can pretty much one-shot almost anything in the game except for Bile Titans. It has a 210 second cooldown and is meant for clearing one thing out. So if you're getting charged by a tank, a Hulk, or you can't blow up that one gun that's out in the distance, throw in the Rail Strike, it will take it out. It's also very satisfying to see a Charger try to run for their lives from this one. It's almost an S tier if you had more of them that you could call out frequently, but it is really good one-shot capabilities. I'm throwing this one in the A tier. Moving on, we have the Orbital Laser, but I like to call this one Sid from Toy Story. So anytime I throw it out, I say Sid is online. And then I watch as a giant laser comes down from the sky like a magnifying glass, burning everything and anything in its path. It does have limited use, I believe you can only use this up to three times per match. So once it's done, it's done. But if you're conservative and know when to use this one, this can take down anything. Bio Titans, Chargers, Tanks, Objectives, it is so good. So if you have a full Helldiver unit using this one, you can take down anything, S tier. Up next is the Walking Orbital Strike. Now this one can blow up a lot of enemies that are in an area. It can also do damage to bigger things like Bile Titans, Chargers, Hulks. However, it doesn't seem to be too reliable because of how far it walks. Yes, it can blow up structures, but there's been many times where I've thrown this thing out and not only does it barely do anything to what's around me, it will murder my fellow Helldivers because they felt like they were pretty far away from it. It can be useful sometimes, but it does feel like RNG. I'm throwing this one actually in the D tier. Up next is the Orbital 380. And similar to the Walking Barrage, this thing explodes over a, an enormous area. This can be problematic because it can aggro things that you're not looking to fight. And when you throw it in an extra large base, it just hits things randomly. So you hope that it's going to blow up all the structures when you throw it in there. In fact, that is your plan to blow up everything that's in there. But that almost never happens. I'm throwing this one in the D tier. Up next is the 120 Salvo Barrage. Unlike the Walking Barrage in the 380, this one is concentrated to a small area. It can be used to blow up structures, and where you throw it is primarily where it's gonna go, so you can actually rely on it. 
just don't get too close. It's pretty decent, it's average. I'm gonna throw it in C. Moving on, we have the orbital air burst. Now, do not sleep on this stratagem. Because this isn't an eagle calling, you can even use this when there's anti-air present. Now, this is not made to kill things like structures and other objectives, but this comes down in three separate barrages, almost like a hailstorm slaughtering so many enemies at once. I use this sometimes on hell dive and it gets me out of these situations. However, you're not gonna be killing things like chargers and bile titans with it. It's really good for what it is, but it's not for objectives, but it'll get you a ton of kills, fun to use, and it comes back quickly. This is a B tier. Up next is the Orbital Gatling Barrage. Similar to the Air Burst, this is really good at killing a lot of things at once. Even fighting the automatons, you can see this one slaughtering the bruisers, the hulks, and devastators alike. No, it's not taking out cannons. No, it's not taking out tanks, but it is pretty decent. I'm also gonna be throwing this one the B tier. Up next is the EMS Mortar Sentry. Now this one is a mortar that fires non-lethal bursts. When it hits the ground, it disrupts everything, especially the automatons. And when the automatons are just sitting there doing nothing, you can pick them off with ease. And because you don't have to worry about murdering your friends, this is a great little thing to use. It's functional and also sets up for a lot of combos. I have to put this one pretty high in B tier. Up next, we have the Rocket Sentry. The Rocket Sentry's main goal is to target really big things, but will also target little things if other things are not in the area. This will fire at Bile Titans, Hulk Bruisers, Tanks, so on and so forth. But because this thing does pull aggro, it will make the other enemies want to break that almost instantly. So be careful where you put it. Don't just throw it in the middle of things and expect it to live. It definitely won't. Put this one away from combat and let it shoot in and have the enemies be drawn to it so you can also shoot at them from a distance. But it is is pretty slow to fire and can be pretty dumb sometimes. I'm gonna throw this one in the C tier. Up next, we have the Auto Cannon Sentry. Now this one is pretty much the smarter version of the rocket. It can also fire at big things and will attempt to shoot down dropships and things alike. It is very powerful and really fun to see this thing shooting at chargers. This will make the automatons and chargers really mad so they will break this one almost immediately. But if you know where to put this, this can be extremely powerful. This one, B tier. Moving on, we have the Mortar Sentry. Now the Mortar Sentry will get a lot of kills for you. It will also kill you and your friends every single game, no exception. This thing doesn't understand when something was killed. So let's say there was an enemy near you and you kill him. Sometimes almost five seconds later, mortars will hit in your exact spot where you killed the enemy before. So be careful when you're using this one. I do not recommend fighting Terminids with it. It's good because it will blow up tanks and also Hulk bruisers and whatnot but it doesn't blow up any other objectives. And because you kill yourself so many times with this one and your friends, it can be very stupid. I'm gonna throw this one actually in the C tier. I know what you guys are gonna say. It is so good for those you know, grind missions where you're trying to get medals, but trust me, there's more to the game than just those levels. When you use it in everything else, it gets pretty frustrating, C tier. Up next, we have the Gatling Sentry and Machine Gun Sentry. And to be honest, these both kind of feel like they're this exact same thing. I know one's supposed to fire faster and have more ammo, but they both feel the same, to be honest. They're not meant for fighting big boys, but they can definitely call their attention and even do damage in the right scenario. They will mow down everything in their path, and you can even lay down on top of them if you want to see where they're aiming, and you can also aim there as well. I'm actually going to safely put both of them in the B tier. They could go lower to like a high C, but I think it's fair to put them in B. Up next, we have the HMG Emplacement. Now, this is a turret that you have to call down and man yourself. It has a ton of ammo, but is slow to turn around. But to be honest, when you're using this one, and you get a bunch of enemies in your crosshair, you can slaughter the whole line of them from incredible distance with accuracy. Even those Hulk bruisers, if they have their back turned or their faceplate is destroyed, you can destroy them in like a second with focus fire on. However, this thing can't be moved. Once it's down, it's down. It does have a decent amount of life, so you can actually call it down as you're being swarmed and the enemies will attack that one instead of you. It's hard to put this one on the list because I've had so much success with it in various amounts of missions. I don't know where to put it, so to be honest with you, I'm gonna throw this one in the meme category. It's so fun to use, but I'm sure you're gonna piss off your fellow Helldivers if you're someone that spawns that one in in normal missions. However, I do think there is a case for it to be used elsewhere. Moving on, we have the incendiary landmines. Now these landmines, are definitely different than the anti-personnel because they only explode and do fire damage and some impact damage. However, I have found that it really doesn't do that much damage on things. I've thrown this thing out and one doesn't blow up the other one. So throwing out a landmine field of fire kind of only screws yourself and your team out with this one. It is unfortunate. I wish they were better. 
Yes, it can get kills and they are landmines for denial of area, but the incendiary ones ain't it. This one goes in the D tier. Moving on, you have the anti-personnel mines. These ones, well, pretty much do what the incendiary mines do, just at an infinitely better version. Throw them out inside a bug hive and expect to get a ton of kills with this one. It's also great for extractions, but not so great with teammates because you and your fellow hell divers will kind of forget where you put them out, especially if there's hard to see visibility in these areas. It's still pretty cool. I like using it. I'm going to put it in the C category. Just be warned, you're going to make your fellow hell divers upset. Up next is the Tesla Tower. Now, you would hope this one would be really good, but unfortunately, it's not that good. You can lay down right next to it and not take any damage and lure a bunch of enemies to you. However, something like a Charger or a Bio Titan or anything bigger in the Automaton faction which is quickly destroy this one, leaving you completely screwed laying down on the ground. It's good for low level missions and if you're luring a bunch of enemies there or for a small area of denial, but it's not really that good. I don't see anyone using it. I do want to give this one a complete failure, but it has some uses sometimes. This is a D. Finally, we have the shield tower relay. Now, if the relay had more life or lasted a longer amount of time, it would be pretty good. But because you move around so much in this game and standing still is pretty much a death sentence, this has almost no use aside from maybe, and I mean maybe, evacuating civilians. If you're playing and other hell divers see you using this one and you're not evacuating civilians, you're just gonna piss people off. This is an instant F. And there you go. There is your finished stratagem tier list right there. There's also another secret weapon that's not on here that I know you've seen in the game before, but you can't unlock it. And that is the break action shotgun is a double barrel shotgun that, well, does pack a lot of punch, but you can only fire two shells before you need to reload. You'll get swarmed quickly fighting this one while fighting the automatons. But if you plan on using this one, just know you'll probably fail the mission. It would be for the memes. Put this one in the meme tier, but unfortunately I have no picture for it. And there you have it, my friends. There is your ultimate tier list for the weapons and stratagems. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. If you disagree with me, let me know with a respectful comment in the section down below. I'd be glad to reassess this list in the future as things change. And if you're new to downloadable content, why not subscribe? It's free. But who knows? This could also just be automaton propaganda.